Hey friends, so here I am coming to you from a Cook State Park, one of my favorite places in Niantic, and I want to wish you a very, very happy Easter. So please uh, wish uh, a happy Easter to people in your house right now. You can just go ahead and pause this video. Even if it's your dog or cat, you can wish them a happy Easter. And of course on Easter we also say Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. And that's a very, very ancient Paschal greeting is what it's called. And it's always followed by three kisses on the cheek. So if you are not social distancing from your family, uh, you can also give them a Paschal greeting this morning. So um, as usual, uh, we're providing a beautiful array of scripture and prayer and music this morning. And we're excited to be able to do that. We hope also that you'll share this video with anyone who may not be able to get to church or anyone who might want to um, experience some Easter worship uh, in this way. And finally, I'm holding um, a Cadbury egg. And um, I'm not sure that I'm a huge fan of Cadbury eggs, but on Easter I like to have a Cadbury egg. So this is just my reminder to myself and also to you um, to get as much Easter as you can into your Easter. And if you're not in the Easter spirit this year, that's okay too. Um, but if you are going to celebrate Easter, um, including by, of course, uh, participating in this worship service, I hope that you'll find some time for sweetness and for joy even in these times. So wishing you a happy Easter and um, let me say also that God is good all the time and all the time God is good. So happy Easter. Good morning and happy Easter to you. As we worship together, I hope you have your Alleluia bingo card. You can listen for the words and color them in when you hear them. And every time you get five across, you shout out Alleluia. And your parents can join in too. So today for Easter, I have a special book that I've been really looking forward to sharing with you. It's called This is the Mystery of Easter. And Easter is kind of a mystery, isn't it? So the book is written by Amelia Richardson Dress and it's illustrated by Lily J. Moore. The Mystery of Easter. This is the mystery of Easter, and it's dedicated to all the children who teach us how to take scripture seriously. May we all love this story enough to wrestle with it, play with it, and live it. One thing I love with our children's messages is all of your questions and all the things you wonder about. 
sometimes that helps adults see how they can wonder and question things too. So here we go. There once was a man who loved big enough to change the world. People knew he was in God and God was in him. Everywhere he went, people would ask him, what's the best way to live? This man, whose name was Jesus, would answer, and there he is, he would answer, love. Love God, love yourself, love everyone else. That's called the great commandment too. There's everybody loving. Now, there were some people who didn't like what Jesus was teaching. They did not want to be told to love God, love themselves, and love everyone else. It's a very hard thing to love that big. Ooh, look at them. They're pretty angry. Instead of learning this hard thing, they decided to have Jesus killed. This is the hard part of the story. When we tell this part of the story, we always say, this is not the end of the story. The hard part of the story is that Jesus' enemies did not want to learn to love, so they had Jesus killed on a cross. Oh, look at all the teardrops around the cross. The cross reminds us of a very sad thing. Jesus' friends, the ones who knew that he was in God and God was in him, were very sad. They remembered how they felt when Jesus was around, like God was with them too. Their hearts were broken. Jesus' friends put him in a tomb, which was like a cave and they used a big stone for the door. Then they took some time to cry and hug and to try to fix their broken hearts. There they are, gathering together. Later, several of Jesus' friends went to the tomb where he was buried. Sometimes, when you're very sad because someone has died, it helps to visit their grave. The tomb was like a grave, and Jesus' friends were very sad. When they got there, they discovered that the huge, huge stone that had been blocking the entrance was out of the way. Look at that, it's out of the way. Inside, they saw a man dressed in a white robe who said to them, Do not be afraid. You're sad, but here is good news. Jesus is alive again. This is a mysterious story. This is the story that changes the cross. It still reminds us of a sad thing, but now it also reminds us of a good, important thing. Now it reminds us that no matter what happens, no matter how hard things are, we are with God and God is with us. This is the secret to loving God, loving yourself, and loving everyone else. And I'm not sure why it's written in cursive, but I'll read it to you. God is always with you. Wow, that is good news. That is good news. So I hope you have a wonderful Easter and I hope you enjoy the mystery of Easter. Let's pray together. Loving God, 
Thank you for sending us Jesus, who shows us how to love you, to love ourselves, and to love everyone else. Be with us in the good times. Be with us in the really hard times. We love you, God. Amen. Amen. Hey friends, so this morning I'm going to read the Easter account from the Gospel of Mark. This is Mark chapter 16, and I'm reading to you, I'd like to show you the Bibles that I'm reading from. There's a seagull. We're really at McCook's. Um, I'm reading from my pocket Bible, which I carry with me in my car. I take this into hospital rooms and when I'm visiting people, so this is the Bible I'm reading from. Tiny, tiny script. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You were looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you'll see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. So a friend of mine said to me that this has been the lentiest Lent that we've had in a really long time. And I don't know about you, but this is the first Easter Sunday that I haven't spent inside a church. These are strange times indeed. And yet here it is, it's Easter morning. And here I am at McCook State Park, one of my favorite places in Niantic. I think my dog and I go here every single day. One of the things about moving from the Midwest to the coast is that I have now access to the ocean and I love it here. But I, I think I found this place so early on because as a Midwestern girl who's used to wide open spaces and, and rolling fields and hills, coming to the edge, <laughs> coming to McCook's <laughs> and to Land's End, at least here, and looking out over the wide open vista, the water, and all of that flat surface gives me a sense of comfort. I love looking at flat and wide open spaces. In so many ways, the Gospel of Mark, the Easter, <laughs> the Easter story in the Gospel of Mark, it ends in this very disappointing way, and in fact, um, other people reading it throughout the ages found it so disappointing. There are two extra endings to Mark <laughs> that were tacked on later on. But the first ending of Mark, which he may or may not have <laughs> actually ended right there, but the first ending of Mark, of course, ends with the women fleeing the tomb in terror and amazement. They just can't take in Easter. They just can't take it in. This year, I don't know that a lot of us can take in all that's happening around us. And in a while, we're going to pray for all the people affected by this crisis. But today, I find myself on Easter morning not looking for even big miracles, because I'm not sure I can even take them in. I'm actually looking more for everyday miracles. Here I am at McCook's with the sun rising behind me. And how many days do I actually spend watching the sunrise? It's an everyday miracle. It's an everyday resurrection. 
Easter, my friends, is not a moment, it's not a day, it's not even a season. I think it was always meant to be to Christians, to people who follow Christ or want to follow Christ. It was always meant to be a frame of mind, a disposition of the heart, a way of seeing the world, a worldview. So that as we look at all the things that are happening around us, as we pay attention, attention to what's going on within us, that our eyes, our ears, our hearts are turned even slightly to what God might be doing in the midst of it. It's resurrection as a mindset, Easter as a disposition of the heart. Speaking of hearts, there are hearts all around. <laughs> and as I drive through even our town, our little town of Niantic, and I know not all of us live in Niantic, but I hope it's true in your town, the people have painted hearts. There are signs that have hearts on them. There are hearts hanging from windows. There are hearts wreathed on doors. To me, that's a sign of Easter as a frame of mind, resurrection as a disposition of the heart. Keep on looking, my friends, for what God is doing in this time of crisis. Keep in your eyesight all the everyday and small miracles that are still unfolding around us. Because those, those, are signs of the resurrection. I'm wishing you a happy Easter. I miss you so much, but I'm wishing you a happy Easter. And until we meet again in person, God bless you and keep you always. So friends, now uh, let's join together in a spirit of prayer. And again, I'm outside. You might be hopefully in a comfy place in your living room with other people, your family members, with your pets, or simply by yourself. And so please find a comfortable place to sit. You can close your eyes and you can take a deep breath. Loving God, thank you for joining us together wherever we are, with one another and with you on this Easter Sunday. We ask today that we might be lifted even just a little bit from the heaviness of the world right now, even the heaviness of Holy Week and that our hearts might be turned more fully towards you, that we might look for everyday miracles, everyday resurrection in your world and in our lives. So please God, lift up these people, these situations to your loving care this morning. And first we think about and bring to mind and imagine the faces of those today who are grieving, feeling the heaviness of the world, who are in need of comfort and strength today. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. And then God, we lift to you all of those in need of healing in whichever form it might take, physical, spiritual, emotional. We imagine those faces. We lift up those names. God, in your mercy, 
hear our prayers. God, we lift up to you all of our pieces of gratitude, all of our joys, and we take a moment or two just to dwell on them, to step away from worry, fear, anxiety, sadness, anger, and to burrow down just a little bit into our reasons for being grateful, the joy we already have. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And God, you know the needs of the world right now are immense. Maybe they always have been, but today they feel huge. And so we lift up to you all of those affected by this crisis, whether they're the people who are sick or who might be sick, their family and friends, their communities, those who are affected by job loss, financial insecurity, all those who throughout this country and world today who are scared, anxious, and fearful. Whether we know them or not, we lift them up to you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And finally, God, we lift up to you our own names, trusting that You'll give us what we ask for, what we deeply ask for because you are good. All the time you are good. So I'm going to say my name and you can say yours. Stephanie. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, take all of these prayers, all of these people, all of these situations, fold them into you. Let your resurrecting spirit uplift, flow, transform, and change all things into goodness and grace. We trust in you as we say together in Christ's name.